everyone, welcome to Bargain Gaming, where we can play excellent games without busting our wallets. This is episode 41 of Mountain Blade Warband. And what we have done uh, in the last episode, which was a couple of days ago, we decided to go elsewhere to start investing our money. And in the process, so I came, we... What I did not show was that we came all the way south uh, and invested in Yelen. Yelen, we already previously invested in Veluka and uh, Ravigard. Uh, no, no, uh, Rivacheg. Rivacheg and Ravadin. I constantly get uh, confused and then we were given an offer of vassalage by the Nord King and he was going to, going to give us uh, what is the uh, not this one he was giving us Odasan Odasan or something Odasan is over here Odasan okay which is very very far and it's actually not bad because it's very far from the maddening crowd and the only people that can attack it is from vagers so and we would be crawl close to so that we did not accept that and the only way to do not to accept it wow there's a lot of flames going on here uh so anyway we were not so we were offered that but we didn't want to do that because that means we would have a uh, problems with what we're trying to do is establish our independence first our ability to make money so I came to Sharice. Sharice, remember, they offered us 12,000 dinars to to either kill one party either from the Saranid side or from the Kyrgyz side so that they will go come to peace. So and I, we, I did not do that. We invested in Almirad, another dye factory. And so we have all over the place and now we are on our way back. So where are we? We are, we just passed a raven. Uh, we just passed Diren. And if we go to reports uh, using the D-pad, right on the D-pad, go to reports, press X, we can go down. So we can, this is our view our character report. Uh, we, I have not used this very often, but this is actually a good uh, feedback as to our renown. Right now, our char character renown is pretty good, 222. And that is why we got an offer from uh, the king of uh, the Nords. And then when we went down south, I bumped into a lord. And when I talked to them, uh, the Saranids, the Saranids are still so uppity. They will only give us an offer of a mercenary, working with them as a mercenary. And they were willing to offer us a thousand gold up front based on our party, quality of our party. It used to be 800, it's now a thousand. And then uh, on our way through, and then the uh, the uh, the Swedians and the Rodax did not offer us anything. Uh, and then once we got past uh, Dirim and on the way up north, we got another. Uh, we also got an offer from the Vagers. The Vagers also offered us vassalage, and they were going to offer us the town of Mazen as our fief. Uh, we did not do that. But uh, to get a weekly, to get a, a report on what are the businesses we have bought so far. So we have bought an iron works at Sargoth, an oil press at Veluka, brewery at Suno, brewery at Jelkala, dye works at Rivacheg, that was the very first one, still making the most money at 1270, uh, a brewery. So we have three breweries there right now and two dire works, one iron work. And I thought, I, I bought also another one at Dirim. Now Dirim is in Swedia, it's the central of everybody. Uh, they, they don't have very good returns, like uh, where Rivacheg is paying back 1270 and uh, Almerad is paying 608. Dirim is only projecting of 518, but, uh, and, um, the other thing is that I'm 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 thinking that we will ultimately be I think siding maybe with the Serenids. The Serenids actually took Nara from the Kurgans. So, but the strongest right now is Dir is Swedia. 
uh, Suedia has, but it's it has fighting multiple people. Uh, if we look at factions here, uh, look at Suedia. Suedia is at war with the kingdom of uh, with the Kyrgyz Karadet. Uh, it's at war with the Rodax and also at war with the Saradid Sultanate. So had we accepted the Saradid Sultanate uh, offer of mercenaryhood, uh, we would have lost our standing with the Vagers. And uh, we also, uh, I just spent, we just spent 10,000 on buying a weavery and dye works from uh, Dirim. And we, I think we will not have I think uh, there will be a force majeure and we will not be able to collect rents from it because we're not considered an enemy. So I, that is the reason why I does not um, accept the mercenary role from uh, the Serenids. Uh The other thing is that uh, what we're trying to do, to do like uh, based on our reports, right, our budget report. So right now we are making about uh, 1200 per seven days per week uh, but but that is uh, not yet enough because um, if we look at our party we still have not maxed out see those slave crushers who still need to max out Sweden men at arms still need to max out and then the uh, Saranid Malamooks still need to max out so we have not maxed out our 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 troops yet once we do that i think we will be back to break even so what i want to do is pile up a lot more cash and then um and then we have not invested in uh the uh, kurgit territory and uh we don't have much except for the one in river check uh we have I think we have three businesses in the Serenids because if we side with them, they will not foreclose on our property. And we have two in uh, Rodox, so I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping to be independent for now. But right now, uh, because they, uh, the Swedians are at war with the Rodox, are war with the Serenids, and what else? Uh, they're at war on three fronts because they're currently the strongest. And so, uh, Kurgit Kanet, the Rodax, and the Saranid. So only the Vagars and the Nords are not fighting with them. Right? Yeah, and the truce with the Nords would soon be expiring. So uh, we don't want... Anyway, so on... And the way that... One of the good things about saving constantly is that uh, when we get the offer, uh, like we got the offer from the Vagars and from the Nords, a vassalage, turning them down, we would have lost like three points of uh, favor with them. And it'll be hard in the future if we want to actually side with them. So uh, I save and then when offer comes, uh, I will use an earlier save game and then it doesn't get repeated. I mean, the offer doesn't come in again. So <laughs> that's one way to actually uh, avoid uh, the offer from those people. So we are on our way back to our favorite hunting grounds. So we have spent many days. I think uh, oh, we have now 46 days left. I think we left when we have about, we spent about 10 days looking for these businesses, uh, talking to individual uh, guild masters. Anyway, we're coming back down, so we uh, we are hopefully uh, we will be able to start generating cash again. So we have been using uh, well, well, we have a positive cash flow right now, so it's not a problem to be out on the road, and that is something I really appreciate at this point in time. Uh, let's go to Ravadin and let's see what they have. Wait, do we have anything uh, party? Uh, no, we, we don't have any uh, things to ransom. Oh, I mean, no prisoners to ransom. And, uh, okay, we are good on food. So there's no reason to go into Ravadin, except just to check. 
Uh, we have not invested anything in Ravenin, but it would be good to check if they have a ransom broker here. Oh, he is here. Okay, so we can come back later once we find. Uh, what what do these things do? Greetings to you, most of all. What is what is it you do? Uh, I compose and write songs for the lords of the land and their ladies. Sometimes I sing about a war. Sometimes about the virtues of kings and sometimes for the more sophisticated audiences about the virtue of wine for most audiences however I sing of love okay oh. tell me yeah nobles are an odd lot in Colorado daughter is a political asset to be given away to a lord with whom her father wishes to make an alliance. Yet the great families of this land idealize pure love between man and woman. And I've seen many a hardened warrior weep copious tears at the doomed ardor of Sahira and Janun in the songs, even as he made plans to break his own daughter's heart. The fathers differ, of course. Some Calradians nobles will let their daughters choose a husband who pleases them. Others, however, feel that to allow their daughters any choice at all would be to diminish their own authority and insist, insist on po imposing a groom whether she likes it or not. But the majority will just steer a middle course. They will want to make the final decision about a groom, but still weigh their daughter's preferences heavily. Among other factors, a happy marriage is more likely to produce heirs, so there is a place for courtship and for the use of skill and passion to win a lady's heart. Uh, do you have any other? Do you, uh, of course, Calradian lords make a great deal of lineage. Uh, make a great deal of lineage, but in the end, lands and money speak louder than one's ancestors. Ancestors. Even though you are a foreigner, if you're coming up in the world, then many parents will consider you a fine catch. You will have to compete compete with many other lords of your realm. However, who will have an advantage? They have known these ladies from childhood and will have been sized up as grooms by carefully discerning mothers and aunts. Some ladies may be fascinated by the stranger yet up for the familiar. So know this, you may have your heart broken, but to enter the arena of love, fearing heartbreak is like entering the battlefield fearing the enemy's powers. Be brave and shrug off the sting of rejection and victory, victory may yet be yours. Ooh. <sighs> How would a suitor meet a lady? Ever, every so often a king of great lord called Radio will hold a feast. In towns they will often be accompanied by tournaments and in castles they will be accompanied by hunts. The feast provides a chance for the lords to repair some of the rivalries that may have undermined the strength of the realm. They also provide an opportunity for families to show off their eligible daughters and ladies will often be allowed to mingle unsupervised with guests. If you have the opportunity, you may attend to attempt to pay the lady a compliment. This indicates to her that you are a potential suitor, and she will usually know if she wishes you to continue your, your suit. Incidentally, if you, took, if you come to her fresh from having distinguished yourself in the tournament or in the hunt, then you may ha make a stronger first impression than otherwise. Ooh. So I guess this is something we need to uh, we need to work on in the future because I think if we want to have a better uh, relationship, or I think once we start to go out on our own or we want to uh, establish our kingdom, I think it might make sense for us to have uh, like a marriage alliance. Yaroglek, let me think. Boyer Valishin has been asking around, uh, let me think, guild master over a river check has put together bounty for, okay, I think we can talk to that river check, right? You, know, you may want to speak with him. Okay. Let... Okay. Uh, and then in the marketplace, uh, let's look for horses, heavy sumter, heavy step. Uh, heavy courser. I think we want speed in the future and also uh, I mean what do you call this uh, hit points on the horse how about you know what 
we actually need better arms. We what we're currently using is a heavy flange mace. Uh, I'm looking for one with heavy iron mace. Is uh, oh, can crush through blocks. Ooh, that is good. A two-handed. Uh, or like a military hammer or something heavy iron mace unbalanced how about what we have uh, heavy flanged mace uh, what we want to do is knock people out it has 26 bash while this one has 37 Oof. and can crush through blocks so that uh, those guys cannot block us how about heavy long Spike club again, bash. Oh no, this is a swing speed. I think a military hammer is one of the better ones. Wow, this one is interesting. Interesting, but uh, can we do it? Uh, can we swing effectively? What is its uh, speed rating? Is eighty eight. For us, ours is uh, one o one. So it's a little slow. Okay. Flange mace, okay. Uh, okay, let's leave. Okay, the other thing that has been cropping up is that Alayan has actually um, talk, told us that he would like to leave. Uh, so I think it might make sense to start building up our our charm a bit more. Uh, to convince him to stay. Oh, the other thing that we uh, I, I just discovered, because uh, Nizar also has this tendency to want to leave because he says uh, we are outshining him and uh, he doesn't like that. So did Bayashur level up? Oh, he did level up. Okay. Um, I think uh, what are we using him as? Uh, I think we're using him as a uh, an archer, athletics, riding, uh, horse archery is at four. Um, so we are using him as an archer. Uh, okay, so he's using archery. Uh, weapon master is at four. Uh, so he needs power draw. Let's see, uh, does agility, agility, uh, athletics, riding, horse, archery, how about, oh, power, no, iron strike, power throw, power draw, okay. I guess we need to do this so that he can now advance one more point in power draw, right? Uh, power draw lets the character use more powerful bows, each point to the skill up to four plus power draw requirements increases bow damage by 14 yes okay uh, and then he has like uh, weapons master of four so he can continue to increase his archery Okay, how about his, his equipment? Uh, we gave him a short bow. We have a nomad bow. This is doing 18 points of damage. Well, this one is doing 20 points of damage. Yeah, we should give him a better bow. And it's a large bag of arrows. Okay, yeah. Oh, the other thing, I think we what we want to do is to have a real lens okay um, never mind okay uh, who's the other guy that we saw Alayen oh he has also leveled up okay uh, he has iron flesh his power strike uh, his riding his shield his riding is three so he's also a major um, so he's a mounted uh, guy I mean huh weapons masters at three 
So agility is the one that allows higher weapons masters, right? I think uh, shield, oh yeah, weapons master, shield, athletics, riding, horse archery. Uh, shield, uh, riding. So we can improve his shield. And he's got one in tactics. master of three okay let's hold off on the next one and then uh, Lezalit see I have been looking at businesses I have not concentrated on our fighting and all stuff like that so Lezalit is uh, our main trainer um, so we can improve intelligence uh, trainer tracking uh, pathfinding spotting inventory management wound treatment surgery first aid engineer and persuasion I think one of these guys we need we need to turn into an engineer for later on um, so he's our current main trainer. So if we get him to 15, training will be at five. Uh, but what would he be as a, uh, as a melee guy or what? Uh, trainer, trainer should be good. I don't know. Okay, um, we can continue to do strength so that his a power strike would go up. Uh, yeah, I think strength needs to go up to fifteen so they can wear us. Uh, the heaviest armor is uh, requires a fifteen, and then agility maybe twelve so that we have four in weapons master. Okay, I think let's work on agility right now. Uh, shields, athletics, horse archery. Oh, we gave him horse archery? Okay. Um, that's not a bad... Uh, okay, let's... Okay, horse archery is pretty good. So that means we can continue to improve his archery then? And let's look at his equipment. Uh, what does he have? Nomad's bow? Yes, and a large bag of arrows. Okay. Uh, huh, he's got spike staff. Okay. Uh, this is slower, right? Maybe we should just give him uh, 21 bash. Speed rating of 95. This is 24 bash. Weapons reach of 70. I think this is actually pretty good. A weapons reach of 117. Okay. Uh, we have this light lens. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, never mind. Okay. So what we can do, let's say, uh, Nizar, what I did was, uh, I went to this conversation and it says, it says, how do you feel about the way things did the company tell me your story? I suppose, you know, I aspire to be king of this land. And then we can go into a situation where we'll ask him to go spread our fame. Oh, we can like this. I did not see this. Okay. Do you have any connections that we could use to our advantage? 
trying to garrison of Dirim, one of my their numbers has lately been in touch with me and suggests that if I were to visit him, he could pass me information on events within the kingdom of Suedi. I am willing to do this if you can spare me. While it is a great disgrace to be a traitor, there is no dishonor in making use of one. Actually, hold. Ah, uh, there is. No, no. Uh, hold off on one. So that's why those are things we can we can talk to them about. And uh, and then uh, Alayen has also. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Uh, so that's a review of what happened. Anyway, our timer went off, so that's a background of what happened in the last couple of days. Um, and also, uh, yeah, in the last 10 in-game days, and in terms of real time, I think in the last day and a half. Okay, uh, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you'll join me in the next episode. Bye!